Boom! Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and giving up your valuable time to learn a little bit here on a very useful session. So this is here designed to help you really understand what to expect in the WSET Level 3 Theory examination. So we call this kind of like a revision session. So it's an overview on what you are going to um, come across during the examination, what you're going to find, how the questions are weighted. Also, we're going to go into what to kind of expect, what uh, what kind of questions you might find, um, and how to answer them with some really useful hints and tips at the end. So as always, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, you can get in touch with me here at Wine With Jimmy. You can do that by commenting on this video below. So that's on the world of YouTube. And you can also get in touch via, of course, if you're that way inclined, the mass world of social media. And you'll see all of the handles at the bottom of every slide. But if you want to go direct to the source, you can get in touch at the website. That's winewithjimmy.com. That's info at winewithjimmy.com. Uh, so let's begin and let's give you all the information you need to get you the preparation of the structure and the format of the level three theory examination. The first thing I just want to mention is that um, depending on your program provider, there may be differences on how they do the examination in terms of what they do first. So you may actually walk into your tasting examination first and then your theory. Here at uh, the schools I run, uh, I actually run the theory first. And that is because um, that means that by the time you get round to the tasting at the end, you will have a neutral palate ready to rock and really ace that tasting examination. Uh, so it depends on who you are with. And you will get two hours for the theory examination, two hours. So let's look on how it is broken down with those two hours. So the WSCT is a professional body, of course, and they cover what are called learning outcomes. And there are five all listed up here on the slide so you can see them with your own eye peepers. So five learning outcomes. Now, I have condensed these because if you read your specification guide, um, there is actually a big blurb, lots of writing about each of these outcomes, which makes it you know, it makes you a little bit cross-eyed. And so I want to make it simplify for you to understand, because really that's my job. So you'll see here, learning outcome one. Here we say natural and human factors in the vineyard and winery. So really we're talking about viticulture and vinification of the world. Uh, and that really dominates very early chapters in your textbook. Learning outcome two is really the still wines of the world. So learning about uh, the key grape varieties of the key regions of the world of still wine. Outcome three, fizzy wines of the world, sparkling wines. Learning outcome four, fortified, of course, our ports and sherries, etc. And then learning outcome five, because this course is um, designed both for consumers and for professionals, uh, there is a little bit on storage, service, wine and food pairing as well. OK, so I'm going to br bring those outcomes into the waiting. So where the marks are allocated and when you sit there in your examination and of course you have mastered your nerves, you are raring to go and the examiner uh, states that you may open your booklet and good luck uh, over the top and the best of luck. Well, when you open your booklet, the first thing that you will come across is the multiple choice questions. OK, so there are, as you can see just here and um, there you go, I can sort of put a box around this. There are 50 multiple choice questions which each carry 
one mark. So you got 50 marks here on multiple choice. They are typical multiple choice questions. So there is a question and there will be four potential answers. And of course, only one of those is correct. Very typical. Now, if you want practice on multiple choice questions, please look at my e-learning portal where we have hundreds and hundreds of them. So plenty of examples there. But taking those five learning outcomes from the previous slide, you'll see that I've listed them on the left, a little bit more condensed, but on the right, you'll see where the marks are allocated in terms of the multiple choice. So you will have eight marks here for the natural and human factors in the vineyard and winery. So maybe questions surrounding geology, maybe questions around trellising and pruning and winemaking techniques, maturation, those kind of things. Eight direct questions. Then you will get the big one, still wines of the world, the one that everybody dreads, but of course you need confidence within. 28 marks of your multiple choice are allocated to these. So maybe things like, what is the major grape variety found in Marlborough, New Zealand? Uh, and maybe something slightly harder than that, of course, as well. Five multiple choice questions on sparkling wines five on fortified wines, and then four on storage, service, wine, and food. It might be something around what is the ideal cellar temperature, what is the ideal temperature to serve a certain style of wine, uh, or around food and wine, you know, maybe acidity in food does what to wine, and so on. OK, now at the bottom, you will see in the green box, I have given you some advice and we have 120 minutes to complete the theory paper. I would recommend a maximum. And this is the limit, a maximum of 30 minutes to complete this uh, part of the paper, the multiple choice personally. I would aim to get my multiple choice done in about 20 minutes because there will be some questions where you see the question and you go straight away answer and there's going to be a lot of those. So if you do come to a question where you're not sure, please don't mull over it. Don't procrastinate. Don't take time, too much time over it. Um, leave it. Come back to it later if you have time. But of course, always make an educated guess if you're not 100% sure. Okay, so that's the multiple choice. I've got some tips coming up later on how to tackle the multiple choice. Once you've completed the multiple choice in your booklet, you turn the next page over and you come to the short written answer questions. Okay, so these are the big section. Now, this section, of the short written answer is split into four questions, each of them carrying 25 marks, okay? 25 marks. So here you are in terms of those four questions. Now I'm going to work from the end. I'm going to start at the end and <laughs> work my way to the beginning. Why? Because question four, as you'll see on the right hand side there and highlighted in green, I have put firstly, it is guaranteed. This means 100% this will happen. You will, you will get a question on sparkling and fortified. And please note, that AND is in capitals and bold. So you're going to get a full short written answer question on sparkling and fortified. OK, absolutely guaranteed. That's listed in your specific application guides as outcomes three and four. And directly, that will account for 20 marks. Now, I know I mentioned just only a few moments ago that there are 25 marks available. 
per question. That is because there is an additional five marks on this question four for storage, service, wine and food for sparkling and fortified. So that is an additional five marks on top of that. And I will actually go through that in a second. So you now know that you are guaranteed a short written answer question and you must, must, must revise it. It is still the most poorly done, the least successfully done question of the whole level three syllabus. So why? Because it's different and it's often taught at the end of the course and it's often the least understood by students. Now you have the opportunity to correct this in the world. You now know it's coming, so please revise it like you've never revised before and put a lot of effort into it. Consider yourself warned. Let's go through the next three questions. Now that question four is guaranteed. Now the next three questions are not guaranteed. So what I'm going to put up here, as you'll see, each questions one, two, and three, I put possible. Now this is because I am being strategic in my mind, what I think may come up in the examination, okay? If I was an examiner, how would I structure this? Now we've done sparkling and fortified, okay? We then, um, I would expect, because France, France is an epic part of your book. I would expect France to be a question, but maybe somewhere within France, maybe something like Bordeaux or Burgundy. Then uh, question two, something else from Europe, for example, Germany, maybe Spain, maybe Italy. And then question three, I would expect something from the New World, California, Australia, something like that. Now, this is not guaranteed. This is really me um, using my brain and then putting it to what really the content you find in your book on what may come up as an, as an examiner, okay? But there are differences. So you might get a lot more new world questions as a multiple choice, uh, and then there probably won't be a new world as a written. So you might actually get something in France and then something Italian and something Spanish. You never know. So I'm just trying to help you really to potentially structure, help you structure your revision. And all of these cover outcomes one and two. Okay, so outcomes one and two talking about vineyards, wineries of still wines of the world. And this will total 70 marks. Okay, 70 marks. Now, if you add that, to the 20 marks, which are available from question four, that means there's a missing 10 marks. And I'm going to get to that on the next slide because there's always 100 marks available on the short written. Recommended timing, a minimum. So a absolute minimum of 90 minutes. And I really, if I was you, would aim for 100 minutes, 25 minutes per question you know, a minute a mark is what I really would be aiming here at the short written. It is really the judgment day for you, the short written section, the be all and end all. Okay, so let's just talk about those missing 10 marks to take it from 90 to 100. And uh, oh, actually, before I do, actually, I will. Let me just talk about those missing 10 marks um, uh, first of all. So here we are. The learning outcome five, remember, is really the, the storage of the service, but the full uh, definition from WSET is to demonstrate the ability to provide information and advice to customers and staff about wine. It's going to be applied to two of the short written questions one of which I already mentioned is the sparkling and fortified, and the other one will be one of the other three questions. There's five marks to the sparkling and fortified and five marks to the other question. That equals 10. That goes with the 20 marks from the fortified and sparkling and the 70 from questions one to three to equal up to 100. 
Okay, so expect something on storage and service as a written. So maybe it's how to open a bottle of sparkling wine. Maybe it's how to uh, decant and serve a port. You know, things like that really do need to be looked at as well. Now, I mentioned uh, the short written answer questions could be by geography like France, like Germany, uh, and like somewhere like in the New World. Um, but there are other possibilities as well of how the questions can be structured. And we can find in the front of your textbooks a very important section which is called white winemaking and red and rosé winemaking. And in those section, it lists the most important grape varieties, which are all listed on this very important slide. Each of these grape varieties, you need to have a very vast amount of knowledge on. How these grape varieties are, are made, um, where they grow in the world, typical styles, you know, all of those things, human influences, etc. So you will see all of those great varieties there. These are each really, if I was you, I would sit down, write Chardonnay, and then I would absolutely write everything in that first chapter uh, in white wine making about Chardonnay. And then where Chardonnay is found in the world. I'll do the same for Sauvignon Blanc. I'll do the same for Riesling and so on and so on. Okay, so you could imagine that maybe one of your short written answer questions is on a grape variety. And as it says on the right hand side, it could include more than one country because of course these grape varieties are found in various countries. Okay, uh, so for example, if it is talking about Riesling, you probably might find most of the question on Germany and then some on Australia. If it was a question on Syrah or Shiraz, you probably have the question on the Rhone Valley, then something like Australia. Okay, so other possibilities right there. So now we've gone through what to expect in terms of the short written questions. Now let's give you some very useful hints and tips on how to deal with these questions. First of all, the multiple choice. Please, I would approach this section first. It's the first bit in your booklet. It's because it gets your vinous juices going, your mind ticking over, looking at lots of sentences involving the world of wine. So I think it gives you a good stimulus if you start with this section. As I mentioned earlier, maximum 30 minutes, really aim between 20 and 30 minutes for this. Please manage your time accordingly. There is only one correct answer per question, A, B, C, or D. Eliminate the incorrect answers. So if you are not immediately sure, a way you can do it is of course looking at some of those answers and eliminating them to give you a higher percentage of a potential mark. So please eliminate incorrect answers. And you may wish to do this by marking the question booklet first because you get a separate answer sheet for the um, where you put your answers for the multiple choice. So you can mark the question booklet first to eliminate the ones you're not sure and then put what you believe is the answer on the answer sheet. Revisit the questions you are unsure about, but please don't spend an epic amount of time on them. Remember, manage your time because if it does come down to an educated guess, you've got a good percentage of passing, of course. And of course, never, ever leave a question blank on the multiple choice because the answer is in front of you. To be honest, never leave anything blank in these examinations. What about key points for the short written questions? Well, approach this section last, after the multiple choice, so it gets you going and into the short written, okay? If you are very much um, structured in your mind around time 
and you are worried about how much time you've got, you may wish to do the short written last, uh, first rather, but it's completely up to you. Um, personally, I've given you my opinion. Manage your time, please. A minimum of 90 to 100 minutes on this section um, to get you the maximum marks. Um, it is very obvious to say, but please read the question and underline what we might say are buzzwords or keywords. OK, so it might say identify blah, 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 blah. Or it might say identify and describe the winemaking choices, blah, 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 blah. You know, so make sure you understand these words. Identifying really is just saying a point. But identifying and describing is saying a point and, of course, going into more detail about it. And it's the same with identify and explain or state and explain. List is really where you just start listing things. No need to go into details of explanation. So please make sure you read the question. Structure your answer. Look at the marks available. If it says identify and describe for two marks, blah, 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 then you would identify really one thing and describe it. But if it says four marks, you'll actually identify potentially two things and describe them. But it may be that it actually says identify and describe two points at that bit. Sometimes there are um, uh, uh, um, odd marks available, so like three, for example. But uh, it says only identify and describe. So I would identify for one mark and describe for two marks. OK, so we'll always look at the marks available. Please write clearly. Uh, examiners do struggle to give you marks if they cannot read the question. And many students also ask me, do we have to spell every word absolutely correctly? No, this is WSET. This is the world of wine. We are human beings. We don't expect you to pronounce everything exactly perfectly, nor write everything down every letter, because with this course, you will have to learn a variety of languages. Some people will have to learn English to actually take this course. Others will have to adapt to understand French and Italian and Spain and German and Hungarian and so on. So, it's really, it really in this industry, we don't correct in terms of pronunciation and in terms of spelling, uh, as long as the word looks close to the word. So if you're trying to write Birren aus um, which is a category of Pradikets, fine, then as long as it looks quite like the word, if you've missed out a couple of E's or you've put an E where an A should be and so on and so on, <laughs> Um, the examiner is going to be OK with that. All right. So please don't feel like you have to spell everything exactly correctly. And please, of course, try not to leave anything blank because you won't get the marks. Uh, so please do think about the question and have a go at answering it. So let's just have a look on how to structure an answer with the short written answer question. OK, I'm going to give you a poor example, which is here. And on the next slide, an excellent example. So let's look at this one. Um, it's a statement, first of all. Some Chardonnays can have pronounced aromas of hazelnut, butter, sweet spices, toast, vanilla, and a rich texture and full body. Uh, identify and describe. So let's get our little pen out here and say, oh, identify, describe. Fine. One. OK, cool. Identify and describe one winemaking and maturation technique that could be used to achieve these characteristics. Characteristics are hazelnut, butter, sweet spices, toast, vanilla uh, and uh, things like texture and body. OK, uh, so really we have to state something and describe it uh, to get the marks. But there's five marks available here. So we're going to identify one thing and then describe four instances where that's going to uh, create these characters that are listed here. 
A poor answer is oak barrels are used in winemaking to add lots to wine. Okay. They can add sweet spice toast to vanilla. Copying what's up there won't get you the marks. The mark that they have given here, the one mark is because you have said oak barrels. Okay. In fact, it might only be half a mark because it is important to say small oak barrels uh, because large oak barrels won't necessarily add much to the wine. So it might be a generous mark here or it might be half a mark. So that is a poor answer, of course. All right. Let's look at a good answer. Okay. Yes, there's more because there's five marks available. So the same, um, the same statement and the same question. The excellent answer here. Now, um, there is a bit of a flow to the sentence. To produce pronounced aromas of sweet spice toast and a vanilla. So what we're doing here is you have on this statement a lot of characteristics. The reason why this has been um, uh, reset is because we're only picking some of them. So look here sweet spice, toast and vanilla, but not hazelnut, butter or the texture or body. OK, and that is because certain things that a winemaker do will add certain characteristics. And this is what we're talking about. The answer I'm structuring here is around oak. So as you can see, uh, sweet spice, toast and vanilla, a winemaker will utilize or will use uh, small oak barrels. This will get you a mark during fermentation and or maturation. Okay, that's one mark. The origin of the oak, okay, such as American oak can impart more vanilla due to the higher lactone content in those barrels and sweet spice. And the level of toasting, another mark, and age of those barrels, another mark, can impact the aromatic notes of toast. They can create, create more toastiness on those wines. Also, oak can impart tannins, which can increase the body of white wines, which, of course, is listed up here for body. And those bits will all add up to five marks. There you are. Structured, identifying oak, and then how oak will give you the four marks after that. Hopefully, that is clear as crystal, clear as day, clear as night, I suppose. I hope it is perfectly fine for you. OK, so there's an excellent answer. So now we've given you really here what to expect, some examples how to answer questions, and there are plenty of uh, help available for you. Let's look at how you can now go forth and get more help. Your next steps, if you want to really master the level three examination, is please visit www winewithjimmy.com uh, and you'll you'll be seeing this top of the page and you click on e-learning wine just up at the top of the page that will take you to this page you scroll down to this part you click on level three and you subscribe to the e-learning portal for level three it's an excellent resource center for you to help you gain the knowledge, the understanding and the confidence. And you're going to strut into your level three examination with all the confidence brimming out of you. And everyone's going to be staring at you going, that person's going to do exceptionally well. That's what we want to give you. And what can you expect when you sign up to the portal? Let's have a little look. Here you are. And I've listed it here so you can have a good, good look at it over 110 videos with WSET Educator of the Year, me. Uh, many of those videos include me working through those short written questions. And that is hours upon hours of content, 50 hours odd, something like that, 40 or 50 hours. That's a lot to supplement what you are experiencing in class. Multiple choice questions. Probably you don't need too much work on it, but there is plenty there. 750 multiple choice questions. Hundreds of flashcards which are being added to on a monthly basis. Over 25 full short written questions and answers so you can go through them yourself and then mark them against the answers. 
mock examinations, both in videos and in document form and revision sessions and even drag and drop type revision sessions. So many things to really help you. And I really do hope that you visit the site and subscribe because it will really give you the confidence. I'm very keen to help people around the world really ace this examination. As always, uh, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, you can get in touch with me. Uh, as always, by the commenting on this video, social media at the bottom of every slide or direct at winewithjimmy.com. If you are in the beautiful city of London, in old blighty with the grey skies overhead and you need something to cheer you up, then come and see me. Come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much. Bye. And good luck. <laughs>